And good morning to all of Trinity, those listening on the radio and those watching the video. This morning, we see that all the baptized have a calling in God's world. God calls not just pastors and deacons, but also the youngest child, like Samuel. The story of the calling of Nathaniel also plays with the idea of place. Nathaniel initially dismisses Jesus because he comes from Nazareth. But where we come from isn't important. It's where, or rather whom, we come to. Jesus refers to Jacob, who had a vision in a place he called the house of God, in the gates of heaven. Jesus says he himself is the place where Nathaniel will meet God. So let us prepare ourselves for worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So now let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing our opening hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Oh, 
Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for your countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, when the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, makes its presence. Amen. Now let us enjoy some special music. I need thee every hour. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went to lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel, get up, and went. He went to Eli, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lay down in this place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of God of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, here I am. And Eli said, what is it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both, one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you, the members of Christ, and make them members of a prostitute? Never! Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, Two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. According to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael come toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, 
Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, O Christ. So friends, good morning and welcome to the second Sunday of Epiphany. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And connections. Our lives seem to be all about connections, isn't it? Our homes need utilities, water, gas, and electric. I mean, have you ever been home when the utilities are out? Nothing can happen now without them. And to have them, you have to be connected. Do you remember when your phones were boxes that hung on the wall? It is because we want to be connected. And now they are small, smaller as ever, and travel with us everywhere we go. They even control certain things in our lives, even the utilities. It is because we have to be connected. We want our information with us. And you know this, if you've forgot, ever forgotten your phone somewhere, have you ever had it fall out of your pocket in between the seat and the part of your car, you have to stick your hand down there and grab it? There's anxiety. In addition, the phone has to be connected to a network in order for it to possibly work. You see, connection is essential in life. It was not long ago that I studied and learned in my CPE sessions and in life experience that humanity, most of us, crave for personal connection. We yearn to be connected with others, even on social media. So I think for that reason this morning, in the Gospel, John shows us the connection we have through Christ Jesus. John the Baptist saw Christ and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And two of John's disciples heard this. Andrew and John, not the Baptist, but the evangelist, the one writing our gospel that we read this morning. So we hear Jesus say, Come and follow me. And so they do. Then Andrew went and found his brother, Peter, and brought him to see Jesus. Think about that. Automatic, auto, right away, three. And the next day, Jesus goes on to Galilee. Now he meets Philip. And Philip lived in Bethsaida, the same town where Andrew and Peter lived. And Philip runs to find his brother Nathaniel, and he tells him, We have found the Messiah prophesied in the scripture. It's Jesus of Nazareth. And funny enough, Nathan then said, Can't be. Nothing ever good comes from Nazareth. See, we need to realize that Nazareth was not known as the best place back then. But Philip tells him, Come and see. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Jesus tells Nathaniel that he saw him under a fig tree. It was then that Nathaniel believed. And there's the fig tree again. And he exclaims, You are the Son of God and King of Israel. And tells him, You will see greater things than these. For you will see heaven opened and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now that must have been amazing to hear. Friends, this morning's Gospel reading is one of my favorite passages. And we must ask ourselves, what is the greater that Nathaniel will see, the one that Jesus speaks of? Now, do you remember Jacob? He was the son of Isaac. 
It was Jacob who tricked Esau out of his own birthright, and he puts lamb skin on his arms, and Isaac, who was blind, felt the wool and thought it was Esau and gave him the blessing. Jacob ran away to his brother, from his brother, so he would not kill him. And he was out in the country, and he was out under the stars, and it was night, and Jacob laid on the ground to sleep and put his head on a rock for a pillow. Very comfortable, right? And now what did Jacob see in a dream? He saw a ladder, a staircase from the earth to the throne of God. And on that stairway were angels ascending and descending. And God spoke and said to Jacob that he would bless him and give him the land, even as God had promised to Abraham. You see, Jacob saw a stairway to heaven. He didn't hear the song, Stairway to Heaven, but with angels on it going up and going down, it must have been incredible. What will Nathaniel see? Will he see the same? Will he see angels going up and going down, up and down a stairway? But by Jesus, Jesus the Word made flesh. Jesus is the highway, the connection from earth to heaven. He is the new connection. Think about that. You see, angels are the messengers of God. And Jacob saw them coming and going. Nathaniel will also see them coming and going. But how, you may ask? In times past, God sent his words by these messengers, by prophets, and by angels. But now, in Christ, he sends his message by God's own Son. Christ brings the word of God. Christ is the Son of God. Now let's look back at the Old Testament reading for today. It was not Samuel who called out God, but God who called Samuel. And also, though outwardly it looked like Nathaniel was going to come to Christ, it was Christ who first saw Nathaniel. God connected to the young man. Christ then connected himself to Nathaniel. And friends, now Christ is connected to us. We are giving witness to the angels, descending and bearing the message from God. And in the church, God's word has come down to us. The word has come down on us in baptism. The word has come down to us in the Bible. And we know the Bible is true because Jesus is true. The word has come down to us in the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation, which we celebrate. So friends, let us rejoice because we also see the angels ascending in Christ, carrying the message of our prayers. And for it is Christ who presents our prayers to the Father. And yes, these things are greater than being under a fig tree. Jesus is the highway uniting earth and heaven, our two kingdoms. He is the connection. Our cell phones without a connection are dead. Without a connection to God in Christ, we are dead. And if you miss your connection at the airport, you end up in a different place than you were expecting or intended to go. Without a connection to God in Christ, we would end up where we did not intend to go. Therefore, when our lives feel disconnected, we can understand that there is still hope. For whatever may be happening to us at any given moment, and near us, beside us, or around us, the power is still on, and our hearts are filled with light. God is sending eternal and life-giving word, and hearing and receiving our prayers. And we have received the word and believe the testimony of Christ. In Christ, we have seen heaven opened. There are still greater things to be seen. Friends, do you remember 
I once was lost, but now am found. You see, it is interesting to ponder the way God finds people who are not particularly on the hunt for God. And one of the ways God finds people is through us. I mean, notice Philip. He claims to have done the finding himself, but it was actually God at work. We have found him, he said in verse 45. But Jesus finds not one, not even two, but four, and eventually a lot more. You see, Jesus does not seem intending or interested in solo spirituality or the lone believer. The body of Christ finds one another in Jesus' community together. That is the church, and that is why it feels strange on Monday if we have not been to church on Sunday. It is why we are struggling through this pandemic while not gathering in numbers. Friends, we need one another. We need good company. So let us pause for a moment. Friends, our calling is always to come and see. I often say, if you only hang around with people like yourself, you become arrogant and ignorant. And we are called to God to be with others, to those not really expecting us. And we will find both Jesus and ourselves in that place. We can just look at a story of a rich donor visiting Calcutta, meeting Mother Teresa. She pulled out her checkbook and said, how can I help you in your work? Mother Teresa pressed the checkbook back into the woman's purse, took her by hand and said, come and see. She led the woman into an impoverished home and found a hungry, frail child. Care for her. The woman took the child in her lap, wiped her brow, and fed her. It was said to be transformative. And Mother Teresa was right when she said, when we care for a child, we are caring for Jesus. And when we love the unloved, we are loving Jesus. So when you care for the least of these, you care for me, as Jesus said. So we do not do it by ourselves, but by loving one another, alongside one another. So let that sink in, especially over these last couple of weeks. The spread of the Christian church across the world is a person-to-person -person story. Of thousands, millions of people who fanned out across the globe to tell the story about Jesus and what Jesus has done for them. That now becomes our task, to tell people, come and see. Come and see what Jesus has done and is doing for you and for all people. So share the good news and invite people and families, one at a time, to join us each Sunday. Let us be all one, one in the joy of salvation freely, thanks to the cross. Come and see. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be sure? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you? Blinded 
our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all the servants of the gospel that follow Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. And for that reason, for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, and for especially for police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. And now those lacking for food and shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer, and let us pray, and have mercy, O God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And a thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us and that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for those looking for healing from sickness and illness, especially COVID. For the sake of the one who dwells among us, your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, let us all say, amen. The offerings shall be received.
At this time, your family is invited to join us for Holy Communion by using any bread or anything else you find in the home, grape juice or wine, and you're invited to give to each other. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. For that reason, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink. Saying, this is the covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For often as we eat or drink of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now let us come together as one universal church and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So now come to the banquet table, for all is now ready. You are now invited to share the feast, saying the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now God blesses us and sends us into the mission of the world. So may God bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you all with favor and give you Amen. Just 
lofty praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Rising for joy at the work of your hands, forever on and forever on stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. entering God's mission field. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>